Hey yo, what's going on lads? Long time no see. I hope you enjoyed the World Championship Qualifiers. So unfortunately for Group A, my group, uh, I didn't finish top two. The top two were uh, Duel Links Meta, DK, aka Kaiba Boy, and Creative Timothy. And I'm here chilling at rank five. I was actually number four then I decided the point differential uh, was too high. There was a chance for me also to tilt down to below top 10. I think it was safer to stay at within the top 10 than try to go for the top 2. Star Hitman made a run and uh, I commend him for that. He got pretty close. He was like at 100k at one point, then finished at 130k, so that's pretty cool. And I actually did hold rank 1 for a short period of time during the start because I started off very strong, like 17 wins, 1 loss, but then uh, I couldn't maintain it, you know. I wasn't consistent enough. So my rewards are a shiny new icon, and then I got two URs of my choice and two SRs, all prismatic. I haven't decided what I want yet, probably gonna pick up cards for farming like Union Attack or Kaiba Man because they can uh, add 200 points each to your farms and 100k gold, that's always nice. Also there's a shiny button that says, you know, congrats, you achieved a high rank and you can uh, go to the, the finals. but. As you can see, when you click on the button, it says here that uh, you, you actually did not uh, place high enough to qualify, but if the other players, like for some reason, decide they don't want to go or they can't go, then they interview the other participants or the other top 10 and see uh, who they want to take, you know. And to be honest, I kind of don't want to go because it says here in the terms that we may take your photos and then broadcast the images and I'm like, uh, face reveal? Might be a little too early, my boy. But either way, I will press yes, I will and then see where it goes from there. Alright, so I will be showing you footage I recorded during the qualifiers, but not yet. Uh, stay tuned for those videos. First up, I'll be showing you my deck lists plus some replays, so let's move on to those. Alright, so this is a deck that I probably used to climb the most points. Uh, got me to rank 4 and was one of my favorite decks to play. It's a 3-star Demotion Machine deck. I'll actually explain it more in a, another video, but the general gist of it is that uh, it's a little more flexible than other 3-star demotion decks because you're not tied down to, you know, demoting a level 7 monster. We can also tribute for a Machine King if we don't want to demote for it. And we also got Sergeant Electro, which balances out the deck in terms of having level 4 monsters to play, as well as dealing with the back row. Apart from that, I think Rare Metamorph is a very underrated card. It saved me multiple times against Enemy Controller, and it also deals with stuff like Mask of the Accursed and Rear Yoke. Alright, so I know that some of you mans are itching to see some gameplay footage, so before we move on with the other deck lists, let me show you a replay of one of the dirtiest, the most filthy plays that I made during the entire tournament. For those of you that watched the live stream, you already know that I usually don't wash my hands after I use a after I use a washroom, but I had to wash my hands after this game. It was just that dirty. Anyways, uh, the most common 3-star Demotion I deck that I faced is Dark Magician. And so instead of Crystal Seer turn 1, I opt for Barrel Dragoon because uh, this gets a jump on him. Like, uh, if I don't play Barrel Dragoon right now, he could get his Dark Magician out and then use Vigilance when I try to summon Barrel Dragon. And so he sets a monster. By the way, my face down is Econ. And so next turn, I just set my Crystal Seer and my D-Gate, try to pop off with two heads, doesn't come through as usual, and he gets the fish off with his Lejean, you know. So he picks up his Dark Magish, and he's going to go inside with a three-star demo the next turn. Goes ahead and gets that out, hits me with a Thousand Nagio, but I say nah, I hit him with that D, get my Barrel Dragon to safety. And he's gonna be banished for the time being. And he sets a card. Y'all already know what that is, right? I need to find a, out a way to get this Vigilance popped. And so my two choices for Crystal Seer were Rare Metal and Barrel Dragon. I don't need another Barrel Dragon because I'm already at 2000. So the best I could pick up was a Rare Metal, unfortunately, which won't do anything. But the top deck comes through, and here is where the dirty. The dirty dirty happens. I hit him with a soul exchange having no tribute monsters in the hand actually. But he doesn't know that so he's forced to pop Vigilance. And that's negated. But I don't mind at all. Because that was the entire plan. No back row left on the field. Going with Storm. And then uh, Storm allows me to pop my D gate which gets my Barrel Dragon back out on the field. I pop that double heads. 
Get this Dark Magician Clown off the field. Get him off me. And I'm going with that attack. You know how Soul Exchange usually prevents you from ha having a battle phase? Well, it got negated. So GG. So apart from that, the deck I used at the start of the climb was Harpy Relinquished, which actually got me to about... Uh, I think the, the best win rate was like 88% through 35 games. But I think at one point I hit a wall with it because a lot of people were running um, Dimension Gate and then this deck has no way to deal with that. And then to maintain my rank 3, 4, 5 spot, I just played some uh, Endless Balance. And uh, this one is just, you know, straight up copied from Duel Link's meta, man. Uh, I saw the live stream and I was like, I'm copying this deck card for card. And it was pretty good. But the thing is, like, uh, it was already late into the into the qualifiers and everyone already knew about Handless Balance. So people were already taking in cards to counter it. So it didn't have a high win rate as it would have if I played it, you know, the day before. Eliminating the league I found kind of awkward. So I was switching it up with, you know, Wild Tornado sometimes. Just getting that third tornado in there. But yeah, for the most part, those were the decks that I used. Alright, so this is another one against Weevil. The deck has an extremely high win rate against Weevil. Uh, and in this replay, you're gonna see why. It just shuts down everything Weevil does, and it can go very aggressive against him. And also heal up all his, all his you know, residual burn damage. Parasite Infestation only hits me for one Parasite, so that's always nice to have. Crystal Seer turn one. He sets sets, I get two Supremacy, so I'm feeling really good right now. Anyways, I go in with Sergeant Elect and pin down the back row. Set my Rare Metal, go in for the attack, it's a Cocoon. I take a bit of damage there, but I'm not too worried because next turn I can Rare Metal and attack into it if I want. Especially through this mask. And the thing is, you don't have to actually chain Rare Metamorph to the Mask of the Curse. You can pop it at any time. So, I pick up a Burrell Dragoon. Always nice to have. I demo him out. I use Super Machi. And I, I decide to go in with both. Because I'm going aggressive soon. And if I damage him, uh, I might not be able to use the second one. Anyways, the coin flip lands two tails. Pretty sad. But I activate my rare Metamorph. The reason I didn't do in the damage step is because I can't. I can't attack unless uh, I negate the mask first. And so with the mask negated, um, Sergeant Electro can attack. He Karibos, I mean Sphere Bolas, my Borel Dragon. The beautiful thing is that it gets negated even even the 500 damage during the standby phase. Rare Metamorph negates it. He goes Panda, and since I have three monsters, it's enough to kill my Borel Dragon. Which is pretty sad, but I'm not too worried. I flip my Crystal Seer, and I pick up a Machine King instead of Barrel Dragon because I don't want to have three monsters out on the field. Instead, I want to tribute Crystal Seer for Machine King and destroy his Panda. Going on the face down turns out to be Pump Princess. I don't mind too much because now his field is clogged up. His mask is not doing any anything because it's negated my rare metamorph. It's just chilling there, clogging up space. And that electrifying, you know, negation effect is just so satisfying every time I hear that. It's just beautiful, it's uh, music to my ears. I get another rare metal. So I can close out this game pretty fast. There's another parasite, but it won't matter because my field is filled up. I get the double pin on the back row. Meaning he's entirely stuffed up. No more spells for him, only monsters, which means that inevitably he's gonna lose this game. Nothing he can do at this point. Also another reason I don't like Pump Princess, because it clogs up the field, you know. He realizes that he can't do anything anymore. Parasite doesn't pop because the field is full, as I said. Just goes straight to the grave. I hit him with that Machine King, baby. Alright, so one last replay with a 3-star demo. This time it's a Dark Magician 3-star demo. I didn't like it as much as my Machine deck because it was more uh, all in and not so consistent as the Machine one. But it was still pretty fun to play and you could get quick victories off if you drew the right cards. This was not one of those games. It was a Crystal Seer start though. 
Always good to have Crystal Seer in the open hand. He goes in with the Bond, so it turns out it's a Power of Darkness, handless deck. I get to choose between Supremacy and Sage, and the reason I go with Sage is because I already have a Supremacy. I don't think I'll need two Supremacy. But I think uh, two Sages might come in handy if I pick up a Dark Magician girl. Anyways, I go in with Dark Magish. This guy hits me with the Eliminating. Feels bad, man. I have to Supremacy up, just so uh, I survive the next turn. The Saban is just chilling there, looking kind of scary. This thing will have 3,000 total attack if he clears his entire back row in his hand. But fortunately that doesn't happen, he just goes in with Flash Assailant. Gets me down to a low 500. The hotter the cards guides me. I go in with the Lejon. Pop special effect to get uh, an extra tribute summon off. My Dark Magician is 2500 because it's Yami boosted. And there was a Dark Magician in the graveyard, but it goes back to 2200 after I get it back from the grave. Because I'm using Sage to get the two Dark Magicians from the deck out. And then with that double Sage. And this field is beautiful right now. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a triple prismatic field we got going on, baby. It's like, it's like art. And anyways, I go inside and finish him off with 100 over lethal in just one turn. Zero to 100 real quick. Alright boys, so here's one using the uh, handless balance. I like the consistency of this deck though, like you always start off with a monster so that's always good. Guaranteed, almost guaranteed no brick. Like the the bad situations are when you start off with a swift guy in your uh, opening hand as well as gateway. But that doesn't happen that often. Anyways, I set all three, which is Econ D-Gate the combo and Storm, so that my Flash Assailant can have 2000 defense. It is gonna matter because he uses Lejean to get his Dark Magician out as well as fish his Dark... Uh, I mean, get his Dark Magician girl out and then fish out his Dark Magician from his deck. And then when he attacks, he's walled out by the Flash Assail, 2000 defense. Uh, get Wild Tornado, which is bad because uh, it makes Flash Assail lower. The reason I attack here is to see if the back row was poppable, it was not, so my read was Champion's Vigilance. I go ahead and take the Dark Magician girl, attack him for 2000, preventing him from using 3 star demotion unless he has supremacy. And before the turn ends, I hit him with that D gate and get his Dark Magician girl out, and that's mine to keep if I use Storm, which I do have right here. Anyways, it turns out he did have the Super Machi, which is not good for your boy, because he can 3 star demo out his Dark Magish. Hit me for a clean 2500. And at this point, my back's against the ropes. I can only uh, try to hit him with some, you know, some bait plays, similar to the Soul Exchange Bait Arena. And I got just the card for that, which is Flash Assailant. And my hopes were he would vigilance it. And it turns out he does vigilance on my Flash Assailant, preventing, I guess, the mindset was no summon, no problem. But the thing is, I got Wild Tornado and I got the Storm. So, while Tornado destroys his Dark Magician, and D-Gate gets his Dark Magician girl onto my field. And so even though I didn't clear any back row with it, I got insane value from that. And it allows me to win the game with that Dark Magic Feminism attack. Sorry, let me repeat that in a weeb voice. Dark Magic Feminism attack! Alright, final replay before we conclude the video. It's gonna be against a Weavester. Using uh, Swift Gaia once again. You know. So I start off with a Flash Assailant once more. His Parasite Infestation hits me with two Parasites. He sets a Mon. I set that Flash Assail. Set two. Pop Gateway. And I keep Storm in my hand just in case I uh, wanted to eliminate the League. Reason I didn't attack with Flash Assailant because it would be 1200 or 1600 uh, if I said Storm, but I decided not to, which I think uh, I should have probably attacked. Would have been more optimal than this because uh, usually they don't play anything, so you can't eliminate the league anyway. Anyways, I have to uh, set the Storm now, so get Taylor Swift out on the field. I attack with Flash Assailant first. Uh, because I wanted to play around Ladybug, which it turns out he does have one. And then I attack with uh, Taylor Swift, 
pop his Cobra Jar. He gets a token out on the field. His turn comes around, he pops my Gateway with Burning Land, but that actually doesn't matter because it doesn't do anything anyways, besides being Storm Fodder. Masks up Taylor Swift, uh, pins down my Storm, which is uh, pretty worrisome, but I pick up just the right card before the second Parasite comes through. And this was clutch because it allows me to eliminate the lead on his Sergeant Elect, which allows me to Storm as well. Because it's not it's no longer pinned, so I use the storm chain econ play. And I take out his parasite to take his cobra jar, destroy mask instead of burning land, because this will hit him exactly for 3500 and the burning land will finish him off. Just in time before we get hit with that second parasite parasite, you know. So it was uh it was a clutch pickup of the gateway. And that's where I guess uh eliminating the lead comes in very handy. So, hope you enjoyed the video, hope it was informative in some way, and uh, one last thing is I didn't really get to use Last Gamble that much in this, in these qualifiers, reason being is that I played around 3 games with it and I was rolling only 1s and 2s and I decided that if I kept this up I'm gonna get tilted. Like I believe the win rate would have been still decent, but uh, if I got hit with a string of multiple 1 and 2 rolls I would just you know, probably tilt down and it would affect my uh, my decision making and my mentality. Anyways, have yourselves a good one. This is Guns Blazing, signing out.